I believe we've got all the key figures in here now, so from here forward we're simply going to be doing some uh, formatting. I'll try to go slowly as we uh, go through this. Um, on Retirement Savings Calculator, I'm going to Control B, Prepared By, Control B, which is bold, Prepared On, Control B. And under Purpose, I might choose to get in the edit in the formula bar here and just highlight Purpose and Control B, Control U and hit enter. I think that's good for that section. Um, under data section I'll go as wide as my table is wide and I want to control control B the um, data section title and under the home ribbon I'm going to change the color to be uh, a color uh, that matches these variable colors and uh, maybe put a, a bold around that. Looking in here, uh, maybe I'll highlight all of these. Maybe uh, I can go control and click and hold control and click, you know, drag and drop with my left mouse. And maybe I want to center everything. That's personal preference. That's up to you. Under uh, contributions here, I'm going to center these. And for contribution percentage, I'm going to highlight that and uh, merge and center. What that means is it took these two cells and made them one and it just looks a little bit nicer. Um, data complete, I think we're good there. Summary answer section, why don't we turn this a blue so this will be a light blue. Put a bold around it, a uh, bold board around it. Do a, a light blue and uh, control B the name. We'll do the same thing here. We'll use the same coloring um, bold and blue and uh, hit a control B on all those and maybe I will center all of them. Now, as you can see under beginning investment this is a little bit too narrow so we might need to make that a little bit bigger. Um, what happened here with contributions uh, since I hit center and uh, it was in cell C20 what I can do is I can hold the shift button down um, and then click on cell E20 and I can merge and center that and that looks a little bit nicer. I'm going to highlight all of these values and maybe I'll make them currency. Okay, um, I think that looks good. Moving down to the detailed answer section, I'm going to highlight this and make it a, maybe even a darker blue. Um, maybe something like that. But I'm going to change the font to be a, a white this time and why don't I bold it. Okay. Now um, here uh, one thing you can do um, to make big data tables easier to read, like if, if I'm way over here and I see 13,000 it might be hard to recognize that I'm on row 3. Uh, so what you can do is you can highlight this whole table so hold your in fact, here's a hotkey, Alt-A, sorry, uh, Control-A I think is what it is. Let me try it one more time. Oh yeah, there it went. Let me get out of that. Hit Escape, Control-Home. I'll just do that one more time. What I'm doing is I'm going to hit Control-A and it will select this whole uh, data table, Control-A. And up here, under the um, under the home button you should find uh, under this home button uh, an option that's called format as table. This is kind of a nice option because what it will do is take all this data and it will change the coloring from one row to the next to make it a little easier to read. So I'm going to click on that. and You can choose any one of these that you like. Uh, I'll choose this medium and uh, one over. I don't know if it will give me the name of that type. This is table style medium two. But you can choose any one you want. It's a personal preference. But what it will do is it will change the coloring of the rows and it will also will filter uh, the whole table. It's going to ask is this the right range? Uh, yes it is. And it's going to ask does my table have headers? Headers mean does it have a column title. So you can see here I do have column titles so I'm going to leave that check. If I don't uh, then I would want to re remove that and hit OK. So if you notice, uh, very quickly it just filtered the whole thing 
and it, it changed these coloring. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to filter to, to prove out my numbers here, if you notice here I've got my, uh, th these are my numbers at age 65, I can filter this by removing the select all and dragging down and saying I want to see at age 65 and there you go and we can look up just above to see if these ending balances match for example the cumulative earnings match for example cumulative contributions so it seems like that matches and that's kind of a nice thing and you can filter that and I'm going to uh, bring it all back one uh, interesting thing since I had two columns that were named ending balance it then named it it changed the name actually this is in balance and this is in balance 2 uh, so just be aware that it just does that automatically for you. I've tried to get rid of that inbounds too, but it won't go away because it is a filter and each filter column needs to have its own uh, unique name. One other thing uh, we might want to do is just down here in the bottom right is just zoom that, zoom it to be maybe uh, about 93% so you can see everything at one time. I'm going to have to get my uh, employee a little bit wider here. Um, you could play around with uh, you know column widths and all that stuff, but I think this is looking pretty good. Um, I didn't put a bold around this detailed answer section, so why don't I do that? So what I'm doing now is I'm doing one last check. Um, a common mistake that students make is they forget to run spell check, and I, I tend to get in a hurry and not do that. So I'm going to click on review and run the spell check. Um, this is an abbreviation, so I'm going to ignore that. Uh, next, oh, okay, so it doesn't look like I have any spelling errors in here. It must recognize some of the abbreviations, so it looks like I'm good in that way. Uh, I think my figures all prove out. Let's test our um, our blanks. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm proving out my work. I'm going to delete. Um, why don't I delete the anticipated salary increase? And you can see all this data uh, disappears, and so I don't have error messages down below. So that's nice that that. Uh, that I did that. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that, and I think we're good. So, uh, hopefully, you were able to accomplish the objective of this case. I hope uh, this tutorial helped you understand what you're expected to do, and that you will be able to recreate this on your own. Now, I don't know if any of you noticed this, um, but uh, I worked through that whole case without saving once. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a big mistake. As you can imagine, working that much and then uh, not saving. You can see up here at the top, it says Book 1, so that means I've never saved this. And, uh, you know, if something were to happen to my computer, I could have lost all that work. Um, so, uh, contrary to what I just showed, you, you do need to um, save regularly. So, as you know, Alt-F-A is Save As. Now, if you just want to do a normal save, you can just do... Um, I think it's Alt S. Um, sorry, let me. I do want to save changes. Let me go ahead and save that. Uh, so anyway, uh, big idea is please save your work. Uh, although I forgot to do that at the beginning of this, I'm so excited about creating this video. Um, I would strongly recommend that you do save. Um, so I'm going to save this as um, ACC 232B retirement calculator um, tutorial and I want to save that as an Excel uh, workbook. So this is the finalized one, that's the one that I showed at the beginning of the video and then I just redid the whole thing and I'm going to save that. So hopefully you uh, caught that. Um, I, w I will um, clip this on to the very end of the whole thing, so...